Well, it's kind of a lazy day, so I thought it'd be fun to do a random experiment. So today, I'm going to see what happens when I glaze in a vacuum chamber. Okay, so why am I doing this? I have a couple questions. Uh, I've heard it said that it's a good idea to wax the bottoms of your cups uh, when you're dunking the glaze rather than uh, just sponging it off um, because tiny little bits of glaze can theoretically get into the ceramic and then when you fire it on a shelf it kind of weeps out perhaps and sticks it to the shelf and when I heard that I, that kind of surprised me because I've always thought of the glazing process as uh, well in fact it's the reason that we bisque fire isn't it, it it's to get something that's not going to dissolve in water but is porous enough so that it sucks in the water leaving a film of glaze. It never occurred to me that the glaze could actually make it into the ceramic body. First thing I want to do is figure out if I put this in a vacuum chamber, we're going to take this and we're going to fill it full of glaze and then put a, some sort of a, a weight on top and we're going to time it. But I, I don't know in this position uh, how there's going to be an air bubble in there and will the vacuum suck all of the air out? Um, it's not sealed tightly to the floor But um, I can't imagine it would crush it, but that's the first thing I want to do. So I have f uh, five And I have five because four of them I set aside for testing and then I realized uh, I want to do a quick test this way just make sure it's not gonna break it or something um, so and then we'll turn on the vacuum pump it will be loud but hopefully we'll be able to look down through here see it bubbling and watch and see what happens and this just has a silicone rim that I don't even find I have to push it down to get a vacuum going but let's put this in here with a weight on top A lot. Okay, let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, I'm going to close the outside valve there. Close our pump. It's having a hard time not focusing on the lid, but that was pretty violent. But it didn't break it. If I let it all go in too quickly, uh, things tend to splash, so I'm letting it. There you go. Well, interesting, the thing is really sucked down hard. <laughs> interesting. Man, that sucked down there. I can feel the whole thing bulging up underneath. All right, let me pour this off and see if I can get it out of there. There you go. Interestingly, did not get all the way up in there. But that is as thick as I've ever seen that glaze before. Take our first piece, and this time I'm gonna, I didn't like the fact that it's stuck down. So this time I'm gonna put it in with a, there's an old hammer head as a weight. And we'll set that in there, throw it in and pull a vacuum, count to 10, pull it out and set it aside. And it's not moving. 
Yeah, very interesting that there was no bubbling. It tells me that all of that violent bubbling we were seeing before was simply due to the air coming out that was trapped under the cup. Slightly stuck to the bottom, but nowhere near as bad as I feared. All right, for now I'm just gonna clean the bottom of this and set it aside. Okay, there you go. So here's what we got. I have these two here that I cleaned as well as I could. They definitely have kind of a you know, anything with red iron oxide, you never seem to be able to get it all the way off. So they're kind of pinky. And then we have um, the one done in the vacuum and the one done in the bucket. And I'm going to go ahead and just keep this really thickly. This is the, our test piece we did first to see if it would break. So those are the five. But first thing first, I'm going to take them in the house, set them in the corner of a warm room, and let them sit there for maybe three or four days, maybe a week, and then I'll come back, assume that they're dry, and remeasure their weights uh, to see what we get. And then of course we'll, we'll fire them. So right out of the bat, I noticed that both of these floating blues are really, really nice examples of floating blue. Uh, as you can see from the edge, when it gets thin, it turns brown, and I've had the problem of not double dipping or getting a thin coating for whatever reason and having a whole batch of blue mugs turn out brown, which is a real bummer. So uh, to see it go blue means it was definitely nice and thick, but you can tell right out of the bat that to me this looks like it was much thicker. This looks more like blue jeans, kind of more variegated. Uh, this has got much finer texture. So that doesn't surprise me, but I can't wait to break these and to get some idea of whether or not it penetrated the, the body at all. So we have these two that, and I looked over them to see if there's anything visible, and there are, little, I hope you can see this, tiny little specks every once in a while. So that could be the case where there was a tiny little porosity that actually held some of the glaze in. Now, uh, if it was truly sucked in, I shouldn't have been able to sponge it off. So I'm not really worried about having the sponge water, for example, get down in there and wash out something, but I do have a couple, like this right here. I don't know what that is. That might be proof of glaze penetration, at least into a tiny pore. But this is, a, this is B mix and so it's kind of a porcelain alternative, a very tight body clay, so it's not really groggy. It doesn't seem like it has a lot of openings, but uh, so we're going to break these two. And I did two just in case uh, uh, we got something that happened with one. I, I would ha hopefully have two examples if it proved to be true. So next we're going to take a hammer and we're going to break these things. Well, number one, that's a pretty thickly, embarrassingly thick mug, but I'm not even sure how old it is. But to the naked eye, I don't see any evidence, for example, 
I was hoping to look ever so closely at the edge and see just the slightest blush maybe or even speckles but I am not seeing that okay I'm gonna start with the one that was just a normal bucket dip and uh, did not have any vacuum treatment As you would expect, there is a line, but what I can't easily discern is whether or not it goes in at all. It doesn't look like it does. I'm going to take some still photography and see if I can get a better zoom in on the computer, and if I can, I'll, I'll put those in now. Okay, let's break the next one. If, if for no other reason, I'm excited to see the, the vacuum compared to the non-vacuum, just in terms of how thick it is. Well, you can see just right out of the gate that this is definitely a thicker, definitely a thicker coating. But I'm not seeing any evidence of penetration with the naked eye. Again, I'm going to take some pictures. I'll see if I can zoom in uh, better on a still. But I don't see any evidence that I'm able to force glaze into the body of the clay. Well, if there was one interesting idea that came out of this project, the idea of maybe using a vacuum chamber to apply a thicker glaze than you could with multiple dips in the traditional way. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks again. <laughs>